everyone. My name is Julie. I'm a librarian at the Vancouver Island Regional Library in the Nanaimo North branch. And I'm here today to tell you all about Reading Link Challenge 2023-2024. Um, so we're really excited to get this year's competitions and reading and just get this year underway. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I want to tell you a little bit about Reading Link Challenge. Um, and then we are going to reveal the six books that everyone will be reading this year. Yeah. Um, so first, to tell you a little bit about Reading Link Challenge. So for some of you, this will be a repeat because if you're in grade five and your school participated last year, um, it's quite possible that you participated last year too as a grade four student. Um, but a lot of you, for a lot of you, this will be brand new. Um, so Reading Link Challenge is for students in grade four and five. And what happens with Reading Link Challenge is we are going to drop off a set of six books at your school. And you have until February or March to read as many of these six books as you can. Every school will be reading the same six books. And you want to try and remember as much about these books as you can. Um, because in February or March, we'll be doing some competitions where you try and remember <laughs> lots and lots of details from the books. So yeah, so we'll drop off the books. And then the other thing that happens is you will want to be in teams for these competitions. So a team can have up to six people. And what you want to do is you've got your six people and between you all you want to read as many of the books as you can. So you know, six books is maybe a lot to read before February, March because you've got lots of other things going on too, right? So, so if, you, you know, if you personally can't read all six books, um, that's perfectly fine. You can still participate. You'll just want to get kind of in your team and have a strategy. So, you know, maybe one of you is reading two of the books and another one of you is reading another two books. Maybe one of you will only have time to read one book. That would be fine too. And maybe one of you will have time to read all six books. Um, so just between you, um, in your group of six, you want to try and read as many of the books as you can. And then, as I say, once we get to February or March, that is when the competitions will start. So there is three rounds of competition. Um, round one, which everybody will participate in who is um, doing Reading Link Challenge this year, round one is a competition between the teams in your school. So what will happen is um, a staff member, a library staff member from Vancouver Island Regional Library will come to your school and we will ask you 30 questions about the books. Um, and there'll be some multiple choice questions and some short answer questions and some true false questions and some fill in the blank questions, all kinds of questions. And you'll have 30 seconds to talk in your group, think what the answer might be, and then you write down your answer. And if your answer is correct, you get one point. And whichever team in your school gets the most points after 30 questions, that team will be the school champions. And the school champions move on to round two of the competition. And round two is where you compete against the other teams from the other schools in your community. So for example, if you're in Port Alberni, um, you would compete against the other schools that have been participating in Port Alberni. Or if you're in Souk, you'd participate against the other teams that have been participating in Souk. Um, so that's round two. The team that wins round two moves on to round three. And round three is the Grand Championship of Vancouver Island, the Vancouver Island Grand Championship. And that will take place over the computer because a lot of the schools that are participating um, are far, far, far away from each other. So it'll take place over the computer. And this year we have more communities participating than ever before. So the Vancouver Island Grand Championship this year, there will be a team from Sydney Saanich, Souk, Nanaimo Gabriola, Port Alberni, Cowichan Valley, Comox Valley and Masset. So there'll be seven different teams competing in the Vancouver Island Grand Championship. And whoever wins that will be the champions. Last year's champions uh, were the Tree Snakes Chapter 2 
from Qualset Elementary in Saanich. So congratulations again to them, um, and we'll see who wins this year. So we really hope you're going to enjoy participating in um, Reading Link Challenge this year. And now I think we should introduce the other librarians who are going to be uh, part of Reading Link Challenge this year. So let's meet them. Hi, I'm Kendra at the Gabriola Island branch. Hi, I'm Narielle at the Cowichan branch. Hi, I'm Jesse at the Courtney branch. Hi, I'm Natalie at the Souk branch. Hello, I'm Caitlin at the Port Alberni branch. Hi everyone, I'm Virginia and I'm in Sydney, North Sandwich. All right, yeah, so that's some of the library staff that um, will be participating in Reading Link Challenge with you this year. Um, there's some who couldn't make it to be in the video today, uh, like Etchi in Masset, maybe some of you know Etchi, um, Stainen in uh, Nanaimo Wellington. So yeah, so there's a few people you haven't met yet, but you'll meet, um, meet them as the year goes on. So that is who will be helping us with Reading Link Challenge this year. Now let's move on to the most exciting part of this video. Let's unveil the six books you will be reading this year. Hi everyone, I'm Virginia. I'm the librarian at the Sydney North Saanich branch. And you may be wondering why I'm in my puffy jacket and in my woolly mitts. And it's because this book is going to take us to wintertime in Norway. This fabulous book is called Astrid, The Unstoppable. Speed and self-confidence, that's Astrid's motto. The little, also nicknamed the Little Thunderbolt, she spends her days skiing and sledding, singing merrily as she races down the hillsides and drinking hot chocolate made out of real chocolate bars with her grumpy 70 year old best friend and godfather Gunvald. If only there were other children in the Glimmerdahl Valley to share in her adventures. Then new arrivals bring big changes to the small town and to Astrid's friendship with Gunvald. Written by Maria Parr and translated from Norwegian by Guy Pusey, if you're anything like me, you are going to love Astrid the Unstoppable. Hello, I'm Caitlin, and the book I'm going to be telling you about today is Because of the Rabbit by Cynthia Lord. Emma is both nervous and excited to start school for the first time as a fifth grader, ready to ride a bus, eat in a cafeteria, and sit in a classroom after having been homeschooled ever since she can remember. Finally, it's the night before school starts and mom makes all her favorites for dinner when dad, who's a game warden, gets a call. A woman has found a rabbit stuck in her fence and she needs it rescued. Emma tags along to help, a, help with the rescue and take the rabbit to the shelter as dad says he seems more likely to be someone's pet than a wild animal. When the shelter says no one has reported this rabbit missing, Emma begs to take the rabbit home. Her dad agrees, but on the condition that if someone does report him missing, they'll have to give him back. Emma agrees, and she believes this rabbit to be lucky, a sign from her prepare that school the next day will go well and she might even make a new best friend. Emma decides to name the rabbit Monsieur Le Pen after the mischievous rabbit stories her French prepare used to tell her. Public school is a lot harder than Emma thought. There's rules she doesn't know about, groups full of other kids who don't seem to need any more friends, and even specific places to throw out garbage at lunch. Jack is the only one who will sit with her at lunch and talk to her, and they're even paired together for her first assignment. Emma likes hanging out with Jack, but the other kids in her class tell her that Jack's different, and she's not sure he fits the checklist she made for a new best friend. Will spending time with Jack keep her from making the best friend she knows she's meant to have? And what will happen if the shelter calls to say someone reported a rabbit missing who looks just like Monsieur Le Pen? To find out, read Because of the Rabbit by Cynthia Lord. Hi, this is Nariel Davis from the Cowichan Branch, and I'm here to talk about Linked by Gordon Corman. 
Dana, Link, and Michael live in a pretty quiet town. The biggest news is the dinosaur dig that Dana's parents are helping to lead, or the newest prank that Link and his friends are planning. But when the school is vandalized with a swastika, things change very quickly. Everyone's wondering if Michael did it because he was one of the first people to find it. Or they're expecting Link to have an answer because he seems to fix all the problems. Or they're wondering, they're asking Dana lots of questions because she's one of the only Jewish kids in the school. But when more swastikas start popping up all over the school, old and new problems have to be resolved and looked at. Will they be able to figure out what's going on? Solve the mystery? How will they deal with this change? Find out by reading Linked. Hello everybody, welcome to Reading Link Challenge 2023. My name is Kendra Runnels and I'm the librarian at the Gabriola Island branch. I'm here today to talk to you about JD and the Great Barber Battle by Jay Dillard and illustrated by Akeem Roberts. Tomorrow is JD's first day of grade three and he is getting his first haircut ever by his mom. Uh-oh, not sure if that's gonna go very well. And it doesn't. JD's haircut is so bad that the entire school teases him mercilessly. What is he going to do? He's confident he can solve this problem somehow, even though he doesn't have the money to pay for a proper haircut. One day, JD happens to be babysitting a little three-year-old boy. He hates his long hair, and this gives him the idea to try out his mom's hair clippers. Well, JD does such a good job of cutting the little boy's hair that the little boy's mom hires him to cut the little boy's hair forever. Soon after, one of the most popular kids at school shows up to JD's house and needs a haircut to fix his hair that he's tried to cut himself. This time, JD puts his wonderful drawing skills to work. He cuts the boy's hair into the logo of the Chicago Bulls basketball team. The haircut is fantastic. The idea for a new business is born. As JD says to himself, art was my thing. Hair was the same and art. Finally, JD will have the money to buy the Marvel comics that he loves. But the only other barber in town, tough guy Henry Jr. is not happy about this new competition. And he almost shuts JD's business down by calling the health inspector on him. JD thinks of every way that he can possibly sabotage Henry Jr.'s barbershop. He thinks of things like putting super glue in his hair scissors, putting blue Gatorade into the comb cleaning jars. But instead of solutions that might land him in juvie, he does the smart things and he brainstorms with a friend about a good solution to his problem. The solution he comes up with is a barber competition where if JD wins, he gets to keep cutting hair, and if he loses, he will stop. Read JD and the Great Barber Battle by Jay Dillard to find out the rest of the story and who wins the Great Barber Battle. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm here to talk to you today about Peter Lee's Notes from the Field by Angela Ahn. Peter's an 11-year-old boy who wants nothing more in life than to be a paleontologist. Every day he practices excavating in the pit in his Haji and Hami's backyard where his little sister LB helps bury bones so Peter can practice his excavation and field skills working towards his goal of being a paleontologist. Then at the end of his fifth grade year he comes across the most magical trip a budding paleontologist could ever have. At the Royal Tyrell Museum at Drumheller, Alberta, there's a junior paleontologist science dig, and Peter signs up immediately. During the cross-country trip from Vancouver to Drumheller, Peter notices that his Hami, his grandmother, is not doing so well, and he's concerned. Using all the skills and observational techniques he learned trying to be a paleontologist, Peter keeps track of Hami's progress. The trip doesn't go as planned, however, and Peter's dreams about being a paleontologist are almost dashed due to his asthma. He doesn't quite give up on paleontology right away, but he returns back to the sixth grade not knowing what he should do with his life anymore. But throughout the whole thing, Hammy is not getting better, and Peter, with his sister LB, 
try to work together to find a way to understand what's happening with Hammy and how to help their parents and grandfather keep care of Hammy and make sure that she's all right. Peter uses all the skills he learned while he's trying to be a paleontologist to figure out what's wrong with Hammy and to help her out. It's a great story of a boy who chases one dream and finds another. Hopefully, you will find Peter's journey through his dash dreams and his paleontology trip, as well as a summer concerned about his grandmother, as interesting and as fun as I did. Hi everybody, my name is Natalie and I am here to introduce you to Upside Down Magic. This is the first book in a series also called Upside Down Magic, and it is by Sarah Milanowski, Lauren Miracle, and also Emily Jenkins. So remember, this is the first book. There's lots of books in this series, and it is perfect for any fans of magic like myself. Um, also perfect for fans of um, fantasy. This book is set in a school, and in the world of Upside Down Magic, there are five different types of magic. So we have fluxers, people who can become animals, uh, flyers, people who can fly, flickers, people who can become invisible or can um, change around with yeah, their visibility. Then there's flares, um, people can conjure fire. And then fuzzies is the last one. They also have special animal talents, um, but it's more like talking to animals rather than becoming uh, an animal. So the main character, Nori, she is what's called a flexor, so she can turn into an animal. However, Nori's magic is a little bit wonky, although we learn in this book that we try to stay away from the word wonky. So what happens to Nori is that she becomes a bitten, which is a beaver and a kitten. And you can imagine the havoc that um, she wreaks when she becomes a bin and she can't quite control her magic. So Nori ends up being put in a class with other kids who have upside down magic where they're trying to learn to control their magic and figure out all the ways that their magic is unique and different and wonderful. And so you can follow along with Nori and her friends as they go on adventures trying to understand their magic. I hope you all enjoy. All right, so those are the books we'll be reading for Reading Link Challenge 2023-2024. I hope they sounded interesting to you, um, and I hope you're going to enjoy reading them. Um, oh, while we're talking about reading them, um, just a little note that yes, you can read them by looking at the words on the page, uh, but another way that you may want to read them is by listening to them. Um, we do have most of the books as e-audiobooks through the library, so you're more than welcome to borrow those and uh, listen to the book. Maybe you could read the book at the same time, or maybe you do just want to listen to the book if you're going on you know, a car trip or something like that. That might be a, a way of uh, reading one of the titles as well. So keep that in mind for sure. And we'll send your teachers a little, and your librarians, a little handout that tells uh, them how they can access or how you can access e-audiobooks through the library. So um, good luck with Reading Link Challenge 2023-2024. And we will see you at your schools in February and March. Bye for now.